You're listening to The Dental Guys, episode 109, an interview with the Academy of Osseo Integration president, Jay Malmquist, and his son, Michael Malmquist. In this episode, we get excited about what's coming up at this year's AO annual meeting. We're gonna talk about the theme of the meeting, evolving technologies in implant dentistry, and what that means for our listeners, and what they should expect to experience at this exciting meeting. You know, we've been waiting for this one for a very long time. This week on The Dental Guys. Looking for a lab that understands the bridge between art and science? Check out the Dental Crafters Network. Dental Crafters, one relationship, infinite possibilities. Contact them at 1-800-472-8302 or at dentalcrafters.net. Do you want to learn to predictably place and restore dental implants using the most modern science and technology? We are talking 60 hours of CE in a comprehensive curriculum and live surgical implant placement on pre-selected patients. Head over to restorativedrivenimplants.com to learn more today. Well, welcome to this week's episode of The Dental Guys. I'm Wes, The Dental Guy. And I'm John, The Dental Guy. John, this is the first AO Dental Guys podcast of 2020, and yeah. we are super excited about today's guest. Tell us a little bit about our guest today. Yeah, this is, uh, first of all, kicking off a partnership between the Dental Guys and the Academy of Austin Integration. And so this is really our first sort of co-branded, you know, working together, partnering together to, to, to be able to produce this show. Um, we're going to be interviewing today the president of the Academy of Osseo Integration, Dr. Jay Momquist, and kind of as a bonus here, his son, Michael, who is a partner of his, also an oral maxillofacial surgeon out in Portland. And we are really excited to get to do this because we get to, I think, hear in this interview about Dr. Momquist's passion about the organization. He's been involved for over 30 years with, with the AO, has been at, uh, at you know a lot of meetings over the years, has done a lot well, he, for the he, he began with the AO, right? Yeah, I mean, one, of the, been, one of like one the, the original, original guys, members. the OG, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and here we get to talk to him about what's coming up. And, and to give you a little preview of what's coming up, first mm. of all, at the meeting, we're going to be uh, there covering the meeting with kind of some unprecedented access to a lot of the speakers, Wes. Yeah, so we're going to be doing some one man on the street interviews. Think about corporate forums. There's going to be an opportunity for us to be able to interview key corporate people and ask the questions that you guys want to hear That's right. answers about, like, what does this product really right. mean for new dentistry? products, right. new techniques. Not only that is we're going to be down on the exhibit floor doing interviews live in a booth space. Kind of figure it like post-game comments right, from right. some of these special speakers. Yeah. That first night during the welcome reception, you guys are going to want to join us down there after that initial Thursday afternoon meeting, right, John? Right, exactly. We're going to have, you know, some of these really high-level speakers there to be able to dive a little deeper into some of the topics that they've discussed from the podium and really get to, again, ask some of those questions that you guys and ladies want us to ask to make sure that you're really getting the full story. Because, you know, when these speakers have to condense a presentation down into 30 minutes or 20 minutes and the AO even has a, a countdown timer. Trust me, it's time. They keep it serious. <laughs> and so we, we can expand a little bit on yes, those things, we can. ask those probing questions and that's going to be exciting. And then coming up, uh, you know, throughout the meeting, we're going to have, you know, those same types of interviews going on and also possibly some new product information from mm -hmm. the exhibitors, mm -hmm. seeing things that we think might change your practice and, and trying to bring you those relevant things. And then Wes, all this next year, we're going to be doing some exciting things yeah, with the Academy. Quarterly podcasts will be released throughout the year of 2020 with specific speakers that John and I have been wanting to talk to for a long time yep. about the dentistry that's changing, really, implant dentistry yep. for the better. And we're going to be bringing those to you guys exclusively yep. through the Academy. And um, I'm excited about that opportunity because, John, it is um, amazing to be able to speak to the people that are actually doing the work, right, right? researching the stuff, yep. right, that, that changes our day-to-day -day practice, yep. but then actually some of these people are actually wet finger dentists That's just right. like you and I. That's right. And, and I think that the organization, you know, for them to embrace, you know, this format that mm. we have, uh, they want to have a, a model uh, of teaching and education that, that really reaches out 
to uh, the listeners that maybe don't always go to these meetings right. and, and find out, well, maybe should you be going to the meeting? We think you'll, you'll discover that through listening to what we're doing, you're going to want to get more involved with this organization, mm-hmm. number one. Number two, you know, we, want, we, we see that they are passionate about just education in general. Mm-hmm. They want, whether it's general dentistry, specialists, surgeons, restorative dentists, to all be able to have access to high-level content from some of these speakers who are world-class. In this podcast, you're going to hear a lot about Jay's passion about Mm -hmm. the AO and why the annual meeting means so much and why they're having it in Seattle, which is a great place. I'm excited about this interview. And so let's just uh, take a break right now after a word from our sponsor, and we'll get right into the interview. Hey guys, it's Justin Goodbread here with Financially Simple. We're still talking about how to grow the value of your practice. To grow the value of the practice, you must focus on leadership. We've already addressed that you want everyone to understand the direction you're headed. Jim Collins, author of the book Good to Great, made a statement that I'm going to oversimplify. He suggested we get the right people on the bus, then put them in the right seats. In order to hire the right people, you have to make sure that you're hiring the right personality type for the position. When is the last time you looked at your personality profile? Have you ever ran a personality profile on your team members? Think about it. How can you lead a team without understanding their motives, their thinking, or their values? If you've never done this, take a look at FinanciallySimple.com. We have several posts providing guidance on how to conduct a personality profile for your team. Now, if you have any questions about how to increase the value of your practice or how to potentially double your net worth every three to five years, hey, look at FinanciallySimple.com as well, and we'd be more than happy to help you. For more information about today's topic and other dental-related topics, head over to FinanciallySimple.com forward slash dentist. Until next time, make it a great day. And welcome to this episode of The Dental Guys. I'm John, The Dental Guy. And I'm Wes, The Dental Guy. And this is a very special episode of our show. Um, We've been talking about uh, getting involved with the Academy of Austin Integration for the last couple of months. We've been talking about the excitement we have with this partnership. And now to really kick that off in anticipation of the upcoming annual meeting, we're here with the president of the Academy of Austin Integration, Dr. Jay Momquist, and his son, Michael, Uh, also an oral surgeon as well in partnership there. Um, Welcome, guys, to the Dental Guys, to the show tonight. Well, thank you. Welcome to you, too. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. We're super excited, and, uh, you know, we want to get a chance to really capture some of the excitement that we know you guys have for this upcoming annual meeting and talk a little bit about that. But first, uh, Jay, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, about your kind of your position in the Academy of Austin Integration, a little bit about both of you, both of you guys. Talk a little bit about your practice, where you are, what you do. Okay, well, I'm uh, Jay Malquist, and I'm the president of the Academy of Osseo Integration, and, and this culminates about 12 years of being on the board of Osseo Integration, and I've actually been a member for more than 30 years and was involved with the very first meeting of the Academy many, many years ago and uh, have followed it and ultimately gotten to be on the board and then ascended through the chairs. And uh, so this year I'm the president and uh, will be president until our meeting uh, finishes up in Seattle in March. Uh, Our practice is a full 30 years. Yeah, more than 30 years, actually. And our practice, we practice a full scope of oral and maxillofacial surgery. So in addition to doing all of the implant uh, procedures, uh, including uh, the placement, grafting, and all the associated uh, supportive uh, features, we also practice a full scope of oral and maxillofacial surgery. So we do uh, orthognathic surgery, TMJ surgery, total joint reconstruction, uh, some pathology, and of course we remove a lot of impacted and malpositioned teeth. So we have a, a, a really a full scope of practice. And Michael joined me three years ago. We're both board certified by the American Board of Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery. And uh, we have a, a rather robust practice here in Portland. I'll let Michael say a few words too. Yeah, so I'm um, Michael Malquist and uh, actually I joined you four years ago. Four years ago. That's, uh, that's all right. 
And uh, I grew up here in Portland, Oregon, but uh, my training took me to Dallas, Texas. And uh, it was there that I, I really got a niche for the TMJ. So it was, it was great to come back and work with someone who's very well known with dental implants, but to know that he does practice a full scope surgery practice. Mm -hmm. So it, uh, we've enjoyed working together. I know some father-son uh, tandems don't quite work out, but uh, we're making it work. And we, uh, we just built a brand new state-of-the-art facility right on the waterfront in downtown Portland. And nice. uh, so it'll be two years in April. And we've got a full-scale OR that we're getting certified right now and a full-time anesthesiologist that works for us. So Wonderful. So you'd be interested with your technology interests as uh, the dental guys. We have a, a full capability of, uh, of streaming out of our OR so we can do procedures and <laughs> And actually send it back right to your desk there and, yeah. and let you watch what we're doing. We have a high-definition camera that comes out of the ceiling. Yeah, so we have a camera right in the ceiling. Love it. That's Love awesome. It. That's right yeah. up our alley. And you, you mentioned Portland. And interestingly, the meeting is right down the road, right? So that's, that's right. That's just coincidence. I mean, I don't have any control over when which meeting is going to be the meeting that I'm president at. Uh, because the meetings are picked out six, seven, eight years uh, out, it's really that important because we're such a big organization, we're more than 5,000 members, our meetings have to be in a large convention uh, setting. So it's just coincidence that I only have to drive 160 miles north to Seattle to, to be at the meeting, which is, which is really quite exciting. Yeah, Seattle's a great town. We, we've been there before for the AO. And uh, tell us a little bit about what Seattle gives uh, members of the AO. Well, I think with, uh, with Seattle, we have, first of all, a beautiful setting. Uh, in the spring, it can be absolutely gorgeous, but it can also be a little bit rainy. We never know for sure what's going to happen. But we have some venues planned in association with the meeting that are going to be quite spectacular. Uh, probably our signature event's going to be able to have anybody that signed up for the meeting will be able to attend uh, the president's event, which will be a three-hour uh, visit to the Boeing Museum and some people will say oh well I've been to the Boeing Museum but they have a new exhibition where they have a whole series of static aircraft so you can walk through an old president uh, Air Force One you can walk through the Concorde you can walk through the first 747 the Dreamliner uh, all of the, these different airplanes that are actually uh, underneath cover but outside so we have it for a, a full three hours so it's going to be quite quite spectacular for anybody that, that attends the meeting and it's all part of the initiate or the, the fee for joining the meeting so there's no additional costs mm. and of course there'll be food and beverage john that's always nice. one of our favorite things is because the ao always opens up you know a special venue we get yeah. excited about it because again we are kind of you know junkies when it comes to air and space and this is another one of those opportunities like if you're a part of the ao this year that you get to go eat dinner and have hors d'oeuvres and talk to people and kind of mix and it is a special situation every time we get to so, be a part yeah. of it. the conversations that happen in around the you know the bar there around the uh, hors d'oeuvres are very interesting because you get some of the speakers uh, in a more comfortable setting sometimes, and you see some interesting interactions, uh, and sometimes even some debate. Uh, you know, uh, hopefully no one throws cocktail olives at anyone else, but it's uh, you know it can get interesting down there, and and that's what we love. We live for that stuff, you know, to get to speak directly to have access really to a lot of the speakers to get to just kind of get to know them and uh, network with your with your friends, and uh, this is an, an opportunity that that you don't get. And of course, plus downtown Seattle. Some guys are throwing fish, those types of things. You know, right. there's all the Pikes other. Peak. Just, yeah, yeah. Pikes, Pikes, Pikes Peak. Market. I mean, you get yeah. all the, or Pikes Market, that's right. Yeah. And you get to, you might even get to, you know, catch a glimpse of Matt Rainier if you're very lucky. You know, you never know. And uh, some people want to go to the first Starbucks, which is right there. Yeah. And, uh, and also going back to the museum, all of the simulators will be on. So you'll be able to operate all yeah. the simulators within the, uh, exhibit which is not always the case when you're there just as a private party and the music Amazing. scene people that are into music you yeah. know yeah there's so always quite, good we're, music we're, there. we're, it's a good point we're really right. excited yeah. Yeah. yeah so from from you mentioned earlier that you've been involved um with the academy of osseo integration since the very beginning and here we are some 35 meetings later and you're the 
you're the president and you're a part of helping this meeting kind of be what it uh, it is, which the title of this year's meeting is Evolving Technologies and Implant Dentistry. And one of the things that the dental guys has always had a part of our practice and our podcast is always look at what is next level. And that's what this year's meeting's about really is essentially what is what is evolving in technologies and implant dentistry that allows us to go to the next level? What are some of the things that you think they're going to be affecting uh, implant dentistry in the coming years? But first, before you answer that, like talk a little bit about why you guys chose uh, this, uh, this that theme. theme. <clears throat> well, you know, I think it's important that we understand that we're constantly moving forward with, uh, with the practice of uh, medicine and dentistry. I think that's uh, the key event here. And, we thought it was very important to sort of begin to look at the movement from analog to digital. And so the, the whole concept of the meeting will be the, uh, how and why and the ways we move from analog, which is the way many of us were trained, into the digital technology, which is where the, where the future is. So everything from robotic surgery to digital imaging to digital impressions all that will be discussed and we have it divided up into surgical and prosthetic tracks. So regardless of your interest as uh, either as a surgeon or as a restorative person or as both, you're going to have an avenue of education that you can follow through uh, several different tracks uh, within the day. So you could pick uh, one side or the other side to go to. But I'm really, really excited. First of all, I want to put a plug in for my chairman of the meeting who is Craig Mish, and I think you guys may be able to interview Craig as a separate uh, podcast, but Craig put the meeting together essentially, and the keynote speaker is quite exciting, it's Catherine Moore, and she is really the person who developed robotic surgery. And so if you think about today in medicine and to some degree in dentistry, the importance of robotic surgery as it relates to eliminating some of the pitfalls with mistakes, surgical mistakes, and making the surgical procedure easier, uh, she, she's really going to be uh, the keynote speaker and, and talk to that. And then along with that, right after her, is Bob Goldberg. And Bob is the past chairman of regenerative medicine at the University or Georgia Tech University, but has recently taken on the position of director and head of the University of Oregon Initiative, which is the complete rebuilding of the science department at the University of Oregon, in large part based on a grant given by Phil and Penny Knight for, three, for a half a billion dollars. Wow. And so they're rebuilding the entire university science department, and it's Bob's position to be in charge of that. So he's going to talk about uh, the future of bioengineering and, in medical devices and regenerative technologies. So we really start the meeting off with a, a real bang with regards to the experts. Yeah, and I, I mean, I think about you know robotic surgery, uh, there you know how where medicine has taken that, and you're starting to see as as you guys are well aware, you know new technologies in implant dentistry with say navigational surgery, you know really starting to make a little bit more of a splash and. You know, and, and Michael, speak to that a little bit. When you were in your training, uh, did, you, did you guys get to play around with some of that technology? And what, what do you think about that, uh, kind of being more, more uh, new, to the, new to, the, uh, to the world of, of private practice? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, that, that was the fun part about when I came back and incorporated some of those uh, skill sets that we learned in residency uh, with my dad. You know, we, we did a lot with uh, doing it the old standard way and then advancing into more of the uh, precision surgery using uh, guided surgery. Uh, I didn't, uh, I haven't worked too much with the navigation. I've, I've played around with it with the X guide, but, mm -hmm. uh, and, and so we didn't have that available quite yet, but we did a lot with, uh, uh, you know, CT uh, guided surgery and prosthetics. Yeah, certainly yeah. I think uh, cone beam uh, technology has changed implant dentistry for the better and I think both of you could speak to being that you've just built a new practice, um, how that technology alone 
um, has really helped us. And that's going to be one of the technologies that is used into some of this robotic um, simul uh, robotic technology allows us to place implants um, you know, even more accurately and more consistent and without fear of injuring the patient or to try to mm -hmm. achieve something prosthetically um, that is very challenging a lot of times in debilitated, um, you know, patients. So yep. I know you guys um, have had a lot of experience in, in comb beam. Talk a little bit about some of the technologies like comb beam technology that you feel like uh, that you've incorporated into your practice that uh, really helps you to go next level. Uh, I'll take that real quick. So we have the newest and latest uh, ICAT comb beam CT. And what we did was we, we've incorporated our, our screens in our consult rooms are interactive. They're display 10 screens. And so it really allows the patient to visualize exactly what we're doing in their touch screen. So they're basically giant whiteboards. And then we can sit there with the new softwares and show them exactly what an implant looks like, how it's going to go and where it's going to go precisely into the bone. Then utilizing the trios, we can incorporate their impression right into their scan. And it's like you said, you know, make, make it uh, a much easier and less invasive procedure and, and more precise. Very cool. Very so I, I, I want to point out then that all of this technology, this is a lot of the things that will be discussed uh, in the various uh, uh, surgical and prosthetic tracks. So you'll get a chance as a participant to, to hear some of the latest uh, lecturers on this material and most of the people that uh, Craig has uh, is elected to have on the podium are all the world experts so it's not just an opportunity to hear uh, some of the local experts local meaning within the United States but you're going to have an opportunity to hear people from as far away as uh, Australia uh, and various parts of Europe uh, and Asia so it's it's really an opportunity to get to see and hear some of the world's experts. We even have somebody coming from uh, Brazil who's quite well known, Christian Coachman, who has mm -hmm. developed a smile line. You guys probably know about it. And he's gonna speak to this. And the opportunity to get him to be able to, to, get, to hear him speak is just something that's uh, very special. Yeah. Now, one of the things I, I love, I've always loved about the Academy of Austin Integration is that um, there's a balance between cutting edge, uh, but also evidence. And I think that that's an important uh, thing that you, you don't see that all the time, even in some more major organizations. You know, we, we know that um, talking about what's new is very important, and, but also balancing that with what's proven and what is evidence-based. And, you know, we were looking back, especially, uh, Jay, some of your uh, some of the history of the things you presented on and, and some of your publications going back. And, you know, it definitely looked like evidence-based practice was very important to you. Um, and, I, and I just wonder how, how do you feel that the AO reflects that at the annual meeting and, and why is that important uh, these days? So that's, that's a great question. And, and for everybody listening, that was a, a question that you developed that we didn't plant. And uh, I think that's, <laughs> yeah. really, that's really important. Uh, the AO is very proud of the fact that it's uh, very strong in presenting evidence-based uh, approaches to everything. So we, we at the AO really feel strongly about the science that we provide the practitioner. And we think science is very important in terms of supporting the processes that we do. So that's probably what we think is one of the things that sets AO off from other organizations is that we are so strong in supporting the science of uh, what is, goes into implant dentistry. And I know that the board would be very happy if I said this, and that is, is that the board, a member, all, all of us, I think there's 12 of us on the board, we vet every single speaker to make sure that they're science-based. And mm -hmm. so that's nobody up in front of the organization, uh, say in Seattle, uh, sort of selling their wares, but rather talking about the, the science that uh, is based for, for what we do. And, and that's, that's really important in this day and age. Yeah, and well, I, you know, even, even to the point where I remember a few years ago, we, we were in uh, one of the corporate forums and uh, one a very famous, uh, very well-known speaker was at that time talking about full arch zirconia hybrids. And this was a very new technology at the time and they were doing it at a particular grad pros program. And, 
he said, yeah, we're doing this. And he showed this amazing presentation. And immediately at the end, probably 30 hands went up when the question period, and people were said things like, how many of these have you done? How many failures have you had? How many publications have, and this was directly after this presentation, you know, and, and this was not in the, the big meeting, but you know, this was, this was a, a smaller uh, part of the meeting, but the point being that you know, people there are very interested in the vetting process, that this is, if somebody comes up and says something that doesn't really fit, um, you might even have a speaker that would, would talk a little bit about that and ask questions about that and make sure that you know, the people that are at this meeting are, uh, I think we feel that. We feel that when we're at the AO is we feel that there's this air of care about making sure that the statements that are made are supported uh, supported well. And I think that's something that, again, we, we don't see as much, in, and we'll be talking at the AO about this a little bit in our, our uh, lecture about um, you know, what has happened in social media and the fact that uh, many times there's a lot of things that are put out there that are, it's very easy to get information out there, but what's, uh, what's needed is, is, is vetting and evidence and science to really, to really back that up. And we love the fact that AOs, it always, what does that mean to you guys in your private practice? Talk a little bit about that in your private practice. When you say evidence-based practice, you know, how, what does that mean to you guys? How, what do you, how do you take, you know, what you look at in the literature or at the meetings and, and maybe translate that in, to make your practice unique or how does that change your practice? I'll take a stab at that first and then Michael can talk about it. But first, of all, I just want to say that we believe in this so strongly that, that in our waiting room, uh, in large bold block letters across one wall, we have that we are an evidence-based practice. Hmm. And that means essentially... Uh, to our patients that none of our patients are experimental animals. We mm -hmm. only practice with them what we believe is something that's based in science and, and works well for them. So we have to have uh, a certain amount of uh, understanding of the knowledge before we're going to try a particular product or technique on the patient. We're not going to you know, see one, do one, teach one, so to speak. So uh, it's very important to us. And we try to set ourselves aside uh, in our own private practice with the concept or tagline of evidence-based practice. But, you know, we, we carrying that forward, that's also the way the AO feels about uh, how they present information. And we even have a lunch and learn, so to speak, but it's called lunch with the masters. And people can sit down in groups of 20 or 30 and, uh, and spend time one-on-one -on -one or in small groups talking with the experts from all over the world. And most of our keynote speakers have a luncheon uh, with a group of speakers. Some of them are already probably sold out. So this is a question we get asked daily because of that sign on our wall. And uh, the answer I give the patients is uh, an evidence-based practice relies on the scientific evidence for uh, guiding our decision-making. And so, you know, the goal, the goal is to eliminate uh, unsounded or outdated practices in favor of more uh, firmly grounded scientific research. Do you think that, uh, are, you, are you seeing that getting better or worse out in, uh, in your world? I mean, what do you, is, that, is that something that we, we really are having a problem with? Because I think we are. I mean, what, do you, what do you guys say to that? I mean, is it something you're having to fight more and more? Or do you think that it's, uh, that, that, uh, it's getting better? Or what do you think about that? Well, I, I, think that the, I think that the problem is actually getting worse. And I think that uh, uh, we have to be careful about what we suggest is science and what we suggest is something that's just a, a technique or something that is fad. And uh, a, a, a good example I would use is the, the various discussions that you all see and we see on blood modifiers and mm. the suggestion that blood modifiers influence bone grafting, when in fact we know the science simply does not support that. So we tell patients, it's going to help you heal, but it's not going to make your bone graft better. It doesn't, there's no science to support that. And that to me is an area that is really overspoken right now in the clinical world. Another one that I've worked very hard in for more than 20 years is bone proteins and some of the issues with bone proteins. And some of the proteins are very clearly osteogenic and some of the other 
so-called bone proteins are in fact nothing but uh, mitogens that cause cells to, to just proliferate faster. So they don't really influence new bone. So these are things that, that we're very careful when we talk with our patients. And I know the AO, when they, t when they look at speakers to make certain these things are not misrepresented. But I think we have to be very careful. Uh, dentistry has to be very careful about what can be done. And some of the areas of navigational surgery and uh, navigational guides and stuff also have to be looked at very carefully because some of these guides are not the panacea mm -hmm. that they're made out to be. And mm -hmm. I know that Craig and his reviewing the speakers looked at this very carefully to make sure that nobody was up there misrepresenting what they were doing. To th one of the things that um, we love about the Academy is the fact that you all encourage science and part of that encouraging science is trying to get people to come to these collaborative meetings. And I say it's a collaborative meeting because of what you guys do to try to bring people into a conversation. You have those mornings with the masters and those luncheons and, and we've been a part of all those things and even bringing corporations to be able to have a conversation around maybe product. And that is an important thing. But we have been a pro we've been a proponent of getting people to come to some of these meetings. It's kind of, let's say, for lack of a better term, a lost art to travel, it seems like, and come to a meeting like this. And tell us a little bit about why do you think it's important to actually travel to a meeting like this and collaborate? Well, I think, I think that's, a, that's a great question because, you know, one of the problems that we run into as an organization is the fact that most everybody today thinks that they can get their CE or their training over the internet or over podcasts or over uh, webinars and things like this. But one of the keys to this is the opportunity to come and have the interaction with the various specialties. You know, the AO is, is kind of evenly divided between perio, oral surgery, prosthetics, and general dentistry. It's the only organization that exists out there that is so evenly divided and, and well represented both in the boards and in the and in the uh, educational pursuits. So having people come and come together and and just network is is key. And I don't think there's enough networking face to face. There's no substitute for for face to face networking or or as you've already said previously, having a discussion over a, a drink in uh, at the a president's event or something, talking about a particular procedure. So. It, it's key. There's this the, the people you meet and the experiences you have at these meetings are something you never forget the rest of your life. And yeah. the opportunity to be able to 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 ask and, and go one on one with some of the world's experts is also something you don't get the opportunity to do over the internet. And just find out what people are doing out there. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what I find fascinating when I go to meetings is see what's working for other people that may not be working for you. Yep. And that, that conversation after the lecture, you know, is always enlightening, you know, and being challenged and then, you know, turning to the person next to you and saying, so are you doing that, you know, in your practice? And what is that, you know, what is that meaning in, for you? And, and do we change is always the question. Do we change? And when? And when yeah. does that time come? You know, how much mm -hmm. evidence is enough to to change your, your practice? Uh, when, when we're at the meeting, one of the things we're going to have an opportunity to do uh, Wes and I, uh, is to interview uh, some of these speakers. We're, we're excited about that because uh, AO has graciously allowed for us to be uh, kind of a part of the meeting in that way that we will have uh, some of the speakers uh, be able to come down maybe after their lecture and we can take some of the things they've talked about and kind of dissect them a little bit more, ask some questions. Um, and we're excited about that because not only the people we'll get to talk to, but also the topics um, who are some folks that, I don't know, maybe it's just a personal interest that you guys have, or maybe it's speakers that, you know, you think are more dynamic, um, topics you'd like to see us, uh, to cover, uh, people you'd like to see us interview that you think would be, would be interesting to our viewers, our listeners. Well, I think that's a, that's a great, that's a great intro to what I was going to say. And if you just look at the first afternoon, Thursday afternoon, opening ceremonies, and after our initial keynote speakers, the opportunity to have on the same program at the same time, a Christian coachman, Marcus Abode, and Frank Spear. 
uh, all within just a mo- an hour and a half of each other, you've got a cross section of some of the most impressive individuals in the entire world in terms of education and what they can offer. And you look at everything from the digital workflow to Frank talking about the terminal dentition. And he's fascinating because he's got a long period of time where he's taking care of restorative needs of patients. And one of the things he talks about is the fact that not every tooth has to be removed. That, Mm -hmm. you know, even though we think implants might be a panacea, he'll talk about the fact that they're not and he'll show. And and I would think from your standpoint, interviewing him would be a remarkable event to have him talk about some of these things because he gives another perspective that sometimes we forget about. Yeah, when he presented the last time on uh, horizontal root fractures, uh, you know, and he would show a picture of this horizontal root fracture that was, say, two-thirds down down the root, and then he would say, well, what do you think about this implant, right? And then he would show, you know, a 20-year follow-up uh, exactly. of the same tooth looking yeah. great, and it challenges your the whole way that we think uh, about some of these patients that, that we would assume, yeah, it's an implant, it's an implant, it's an implant. And sometimes when we go to the AO, that's the other thing that we are struck by. You know, here you are, 30 plus years. Uh, we saw Thomas uh, Albrechtson talk about uh, some of the same idea with uh, when do we remove an implant? You know, and he showed some implants that he would put a slide up and it would be, you know, 50% bone loss, 70% bone loss. And he would say, oh, remove it, correct? And then he would say, what if I showed you this follow-up x-ray? And what would you think then? And what if I told you that was 30 years later? And you you don't see many meetings where you can have a clinician who's been in practice, not only in practice, but in research at a high level, presenting follow-up over 30 years of uh, restorative or implant cases. And like you say, we're going to have multiple people that are going to be presenting uh, from the podium. I I think we might want to focus in and what and you kind of already brought it up without me us having to on uh you know some of the blood additives and yeah, uh, let's so just, let's geek we, out we, a little we'd love bit to have that. some we'd love to have some conversations uh, maybe with you i don't know maybe we need to have you on at the during the meeting because <laughs> this is something that has been uh, very controversial and and uh and definitely has been uh, we have to be careful here, but it's been, you know, there's been some products that have been, uh, you know, sold as a result of the, some of those discussions. I think it'd be great to have a couple folks on to talk about uh, where should, what should we be saying to patients about some of these things? So you have an opportunity with some of the speakers that are there. I, I'll just give you a couple of names uh, that you could, you could tap into. Uh, uh, Tara Aglio, who, who is a, 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 a a DDS, PhD, MD researcher at UCLA, she can talk to you for hours about some of the blood additives because she has done so much of the basic research on it. So she'd be a good person. Talking to Craig Mish would be good. Uh, he has a very definite feeling about these things. Uh, so there's, there's, you have a lot of options while you're there to interview these people and get a good understanding of how they feel about what's what's going out on out in the, in the you know, the clinical world. And I also might add, just while I've, I've got your uh, thought process, uh, you talked a little bit earlier about who else you might uh, interview. We have a, a team coming from Perth, Australia, mm-hmm. uh, Brent Allen and uh, uh, Ludlow, uh, prosthodontist and oral maxillofacial surgeon. And they're gonna make a presentation on the second day that you'll find just a, a fantastic, in, in a, acting with uh, the digital world and the facial world and facial aesthetics and, and the effects and, and their uh, clinical work coupled with their uh, digital work is just phenomenal in the way that they're going to uh, uh, present these patients. And so that it's a, it's a time that you don't want to miss. And it's, it's two people that would be fascinating to, uh, to interview. And, you know, we're giving the Brandamark award to Patrick Henrik from, uh, uh, he's from Australia. Mm. And other than Professor Br- Branamark and uh, uh, George Zarb, probably Patrick Henry is one of the most famous people in early osteointegration in the world. And he's graciously accepted and is coming from Perth, Australia, which is halfway around the world to receive this award. And he'd be fascinating to interview also. So 
he, he could take you from where we used to be and Ken and uh, 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 Brent Allen, they can bring you up to where we are today. So it, it's uh, a real long period to traverse uh, in your uh, interview process if you wanted to. Love it. Michael, you're a new grad, mm -hmm. let's per se. According to the AO, that's anybody 10 years out and under. Yeah. And um, what would you say to a new grad about coming to the annual meeting? I, I think it's just what we were touching on earlier. It's a chance for you to get out and network and be part of the, uh, the, the young lecturers, young uh, clinicians. Uh, they even have a, don't, there's a whole side meeting for the young clinicians. Yep. So there's an opportunity to get out and face to face with, with, uh, with other colleagues. You know, mm -hmm. there's nothing better than to sit down and have a beer and, and, and talk dentistry with some of the, some of the guys you don't get to see very often or, or you see on Instagram or you see on, you know, the social media networks and it's an opportunity to put a face with, you know, a picture or some yep. of the social media that's influencers. Good. Yeah, exactly. And, that, and that's something that I think is exciting. That's, you know, and again, we won't, we don't want to blow our whole lecture here, Wes, but when no. we're talking about, you know, <laughs> the, the social media side of it, which has come up a couple of times, just talking this evening, um, you know, that, that is exactly where the, the, the great things can come. You know, if you're challenged at a meeting like this and you have that mindset of uh, being somebody who's plugged into those things, um, it's a tremendous amount of influence that you can have in a positive way. You know, so as much as the mm -hmm. social media side of things can be you know, questionable sometimes, it can also be mm -hmm. extremely positive. And uh, I, I look forward, too, to seeing some of these younger uh, docs, uh, which, we, which interestingly, Wes and I are not anymore. You know, we used to be those folks coming to the AO, you know, just a couple of years out and, and just kind of being in awe. And now we're, we're, you know, on the other side of that somewhat, uh, looking back and like helping the newer folks to come in. And we think that, uh, we love the fact that AO is committed to that, um, to wanting to see that part of the organization grow, uh, because we think that even more so, as we touched again on this earlier, that, that there is, there isn't as much, at least, automatic desire to come out to to a meeting, um, and and, uh, and we think that that's just so critical to sit. To sometimes you just have to sit and listen and take in that data and be willing to deal with that, even if it is not a, a quick. Tw it's not a Twitter uh, post. It's something that takes time to digest and, and that that's something that we should be proud of because as Wes and I say oftentimes on the show, you know, this stuff is hard. It's not easy. It's actually really hard and that's okay. Like that's why we're doctors. That's why we go to school. Uh, and, and, and I think that that's uh, being at the meeting versus watching a webinar. You just, like you guys touched on before, you can't, you just can't get that, uh, that type of interaction in the same way. Um, well, so I, the, the AO's really well. The AO's really tried hard to uh, to to involve itself with social media and try to reach out because we we realize that this is the future. And some of us that are on the board are a little bit well past that time, and so we don't fully always understand as to what the importance is of some of these other uh, processes like Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook, and all the different social media. So. You make a very, very good point, and we, we want the young people to come and to see what we can uh, provide them on a face-to-face -face basis as opposed to just over the internet and, and see actually what some, of the, what some of the issues are when they look at a, a, these, these lectures, by and large, are extremely pristine and well done. You, you, I doubt that anybody's going to be bored with any lecture they go to. Mm. No, and I, and I think that as a, you know, when I was... I was I was fortunate enough myself uh, to be influenced by people when I was in dental school who were a big part of the AO, and um, you know I, I got out and immediately tried to dive into that. But it's interesting because a lot of the folks that we see on social media that are um, that are getting a lot of their information from that, when you get them aside at a meeting and you actually talk about what's going on, it's oftentimes utter chaos in their actual practice. Things are not always working the way that, that they like. They're posting the things that look good, but they really don't know why things work and why things don't work. And that's the thing I think that, you know, everyone really in the end does want their stuff to work. And right. so if you're, you know, a younger clinician and, you know, you're not sure why things are working or not working, 
uh, you know, that's why you go to meetings like this is, you know, you can take what you're doing, maybe the things that aren't making as much sense, and you can, you can be rest assured that you're going to see the major issues covered. What is the current state of the science in almost every area that you can imagine at a meeting like this and come back with maybe not all the answers, but, but a starting point of who, who do I need to be reading? Who do I need to be seeing more of? Uh, how do I incorporate that into my practice? Uh, it, it is it is a lot of information, but it, that's what we need uh, because it's just amazing how you talk to folks these days who, you know, where do they learn? And oftentimes it's just a smorgasbord of kind of all over the place type of stuff. And and that's what the AO does is kind of centers, you know, Wes and I always say it's the meeting each year that we go to where we kind of go, okay, are we good in our practice? Are we good? Uh, or is there something we need to, to be thinking about about changing? Um, and, and I think that too, as you, as you mentioned, Jay, that, that the, the organization certainly is making a big push toward trying to encourage younger folks uh, to be a part of, uh, of that. And I, I liked, and you mentioned earlier too, that the split uh, between the different specialties and, and general dentistry, how do you, where do you see the, the general dentists fitting in the, with the AO? How, how, do they, how do they fit in the Academy of Boston Integration? Because it wasn't always... Uh, as much of a general dental organization at its origin. No, you're absolutely right. In fact, to give, to give you and your listeners a little bit of a history, originally it was only the people that had taken the formal courses from Professor Branamark that, were, that started out as AO members. They started out with that, actually that list of people, and then they expanded it out to include more people. So... For a long time, it was surgery, prosthetics, and perio. And then it was obvious to everybody that we were leaving out a huge part of the population and we wanted to be all inclusive. So an awful lot of uh, restorative dentists were doing a very nice job and, and needed to be part of the team. So now there is a concerted effort by the board to always have an equal split among the different specialties, including general dentistry as one of the specialties. So that if there's 12 members, it would be, you know, three, 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 and three. Uh, and so over the years, there has, there has been, and there will be a president of AO who's a general dentist. And we think that's wow. very important to be all inclusive. And it, it only makes us all stronger because there's nothing better than, and, than education, and education brings us all together. So we think it's very important to be all inclusive with the whole entire group. And there's a lot of other groups that aren't quite so inclusive. So that's, I think that's one of the things that sets AO apart, is that we're very evenly distributed between the various uh, specialties and general dentistry. We I have all... I was going to Go say, I, I totally agree that uh, having the organization um, open to the entire field of dentistry has made dentistry better uh, because this organization, as John says, helps to set kind of the standard for the year for our practices, but I know many other practices that are that are listening and reading and following the academy and what uh, dentistry that they're uh, bringing to the forefront, putting in front of our uh, our on our desk and allowing us to read, and then too allowing us to kind of come to these meetings and be around people that we not necessarily have the opportunity to be around. Uh, the international crowd is big at the AO as well, and we are uh, – that is that is amazing because it allows us even to interview some of the people that um, we n might necessarily never see at another meeting uh, uh, in the United States. And so I, I am really uh, excited about this year's AO, um, um, one, because John and I are, um, have been – uh, graciously invited to help um, really share what the AO annual meeting is all about. And mm -hmm. uh, we, we are really honored um, by the Academy and um, allowing us to, to do this. And this, this is really just the beginning. Uh, this, yeah. this podcast is kind of our launching out point for what's to come. Uh, you heard us talking a little bit about some of the people we might be interviewing that night on Thursday night. Uh, John, we're going to be at down 
in the welcome reception in right. kind of the middle of everything. You can't miss it. And so you want to come down because we're going to be interviewing some of those people that um, Jay was talking about. And, um, and, then, and then throughout the weekend, you're going to see us running around doing some pretty awesome stuff. And if you see us, please come up to us and, um, and, and shake our hand and tell us, yeah. uh, tell us a little bit about yourself because we're excited about that. We're excited about um, the AO's involvement in that. John? Yeah, and uh, you know, coming uh, into next year, we'll also be releasing quarterly podcasts along with AO which we're very excited about as well, just featuring some of uh, the clinicians that, that we'll be seeing at the meeting, diving even deeper into some of their, their topics and the things they love to talk about. Um, you know, and, and when we're at the meeting, uh, I'm, I'm excited about getting to ask some of the questions that I think a lot of the audience members want to ask. Yep. You know, because we, we, they finished a the lecture, of course, they're not gonna be talking much about products. We can actually ask some of those questions about what are you using in your practice, what's working, tell us how that research is translating uh, into uh, what you're doing, tell us how you're actually using technology. You know, we still want somebody to tell us one day a validated workflow for taking, for making a, uh, you know, a zirconium hybrid all digital. You know, we're getting closer to that. Those are some of those controversial new technologies. Yeah, John, that I think it's time for a call to action. You know, if you're really <laughs> interested in someone or some topic or something, yeah, please send us a message. Yeah, right? let us know. Send the AO hear. message because they'll get it to us. So if you're listening yep. to this on the AO broadcast, send it to them. If you're listening to it on the dental guy's side, hey, send it to us. We are going to have unprecedented access yeah. to some particular people. So yeah, let please. us know who you want us to have on the show. And uh, you know, I think that it, one one thing I would say as far as call to action is if you're listening to this and you're hearing what uh, you know the president and also what Michael's saying about what the meeting means. Mm. You know, now's the time to get involved. Now's the time to get registered. Now's the time to get down and find out how close you can get to Pike's Place Market. Uh, what, <laughs> what, you know, are there still any hotels available? Is there any coffee uh, you know, left in Is Seattle? there any <laughs> coffee? Yes, well, we... There, there's plenty of hotel space. I, I, okay. I want to uh, encourage that. And also, I just want to say one thing that, you know, we're sort of doing this in concert with the... Uh, uh, the Asian population. So we're going to have people from uh, uh, China, Malaysia, uh, the whole Far East is going to, we've invited in, and, and my, I just returned from a trip to uh, Taiwan and uh, Malaysia. And uh, it sounds like there's going to be maybe as many as a many hundred as of these different clinicians coming from that far away to be part awesome. of this. So that's and these all all nice. these people speak perfect English and they, they really are very enthusiastic. That's about great. Coming. Well, we look at some of the research that's being done over in those countries, and it's it's there's some amazing stuff that's happening uh, in in some of those institutions, and uh, you know we're seeing it in Jomi, you know, uh, routinely, and so to have some of those folks be you know among us there uh, again, amazing access that as Wes said before, you don't typically get. Um, so, you know, I, I just, I, I don't see why you wouldn't come to the meeting. There's yeah. no reason why there's no excuses now. We've it's settled really it. sad if you're not coming March 18th yeah. through the 21st, right? Yeah, right, right. And it's the 35th AO annual meeting. It can't be in a better place if yep. you are a coffee drinker, right? I keep right. bringing that That's up, right? right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is one of the best places to buy coffee in yeah. the world. And we both are yeah. coffee snobs and nerds, yeah. so we will if be you listen to us enjoying before, it. Right. We'll be yeah. over drinking some coffee. And yeah. so yeah. according to... Um, to Jay, there's plenty of hotel rooms um, yep, available, there is. and so, yeah, uh, so get signed up, and um, it's going yeah. to be a great meeting. It's yeah, it's going to be a great are, meeting. The hotels are easy access to the convention center. With there's three of them within a block walking distance. Awesome. Yeah, and the convention center is within blocks of you know of the market. I mean, it's right. it's it's easy to get around down there. You don't have to go you know Uber around. You walk everywhere. Uh, super convenient place to be. Mm -hmm. uh, amazing food. So yeah, I mean, anybody's been to Seattle knows what we're talking about. And but very safe. Get, very safe. Well, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And yeah. So well, we really want to first of all, you know, uh, just appreciate you guys being with us today on the podcast. Um, what an honor to have you guys and to, to get to hear directly from the, the the president, from from Michael, from you as well about what number one, what this means to you personally. 
uh, and then what this means to uh, you know to our profession. We're excited to get to be a part of that, um, and uh, and we appreciate your time very very much, and uh, we look forward to getting to talk more uh, with uh, with the other folks that are involved in meeting planning. So thanks again, guys, for being with us on the show today. Well, thanks, thanks for having thanks for having us. Well, Wes, that was uh, that was an amazing interview. What an opportunity to get to interview the president of the AO. Well, this has been our dream for a long since time. Since the beginning of this podcast, here we are. It's 2020. Mm-hmm. We started this podcast back in 2015. Yeah. I just can't believe it. I, I know it's surreal to be able to be involved with this organization. What an honor! What an honor. Um, and and to have a great interview like that, where you get to see the passion that Dr. Momquist and his son both have for the organization, for evidence-based dentistry. There were some things that came up in that interview, you know, that I feel like that in the future we're going to kind of go after. Mm-hmm. He mentioned some people that we need to be talking to at yeah. the AO. One of the things that he mentioned, and I want to bring this up now is biologics. Right. Right. He talked about blood bone, additives. Blood additives and bone enhancers. Yeah. And he said that there were a lot of problems that people were saying things that really weren't science based about bone additives. Yeah. And you know, John, we've kind of came out and said that we want more evidence right. in those areas. And we've had people at the AO said in their hands this seems to be working. Right. But we're not sure. And one of the people we're hoping to get on soon is Dr. Mish. Right. I'm excited to talk about because to me, he's one of the best persons to talk to about bone. And that yeah. was what Dr. Mal- yeah. Was missing. yeah, exactly. He said he said for, for us to speak with him and also Dr. Tara Ogilu from UCLA. Uh, we'll try to have her maybe on the show while yeah, we're there. Yeah, you got to hear her speak last year, Yeah, right? she was out at a, a, a nearby residency, oral mm-hmm. maxillofacial surgery residency program. So I've, I've heard her lecture. She's excellent. Mm. Um, so, yeah, we... We love the fact that, you know, uh, on the show, he was already bringing us closer to things we need to be talking more to people at the AO about that that we could get onto the show. And uh, if you haven't already registered for the meeting, now's your chance. Go register for the meeting. If you're not already following the AO on their socials, definitely do that. Uh, Give give them uh, an opportunity to uh, to kind of show you what they're all about. And and for us, I mean, remember, if you're not already subscribed to us, what are you what are you thinking? Come on. (laughs) It's time. It's shameful if you haven't subscribed to the dental guys. Yeah, subscribe Listen. to our YouTube and subscribe to our Instagram and get involved with us. And always want to remind you guys to leave us a five-star review mm-hmm. on Apple Podcasts. That is huge for us. It's the way that we get information really out there because that's how we get ranked. That's, right. that's how our search stuff comes out. So get get connected with us there too. We really appreciate you guys listening to this podcast and we're excited about it. Uh, we're going to be speaking at the AO. We can't believe that. If you haven't registered for that, check us out there at the Young Clinicians Luncheon. If you can still get tickets, John, I've heard it's sold out. Yeah. You know, so get on the wait list. We've heard some people that got waitlisted got in. So again, um, I love this interview. I'm excited about what's to come. We're going to be doing some more interviews with uh, special speakers from the AO. Yep. So again, thanks to the AO for uh, allowing the dental guys to be a part of a wonderful uh, organization and a wonderful meeting coming up. So for John, I'm Wes, and we are the Dental Guys. <laughs> <laughs>